Hey, good afternoon, good night, <laughs> good morning. My name is Favor Adi Bowale, and this is Let's Talk About Jesus with Favor. I'm so glad that you're here today. Thank you so much for joining. If this is your first time, and if you're returning, I encourage you to subscribe <laughs> at the end. If the video, if the sorry vlog blesses you, I'm used to doing videos. Um, these days I've dialed back a bit on videos. Um, okay, so let's say a word of prayer before we continue. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your goodness and your mercies. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for all that you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross. Thank you for your sacrifice for us in the realm of the Spirit as well. Thank you because we can call on Daddy God through you. Thank you for all that you are. Bless you, Lord, because you are holy and forever you are God. Please teach us your word as we sit at your feet. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. So today, uh, today's word is from, um, we'll be looking at a lot of scriptures anyway, but um, I want to talk about this myth of what will be with will be, right? We hear it all the time, especially in this generation. We think, ah, we will not stress, so what will be will be. I will not, I mean, in some cases, yes, right? If there is a guy that you like, for example, as a woman, and the guy is not really showing signs that you are stressing and all that, yes, you don't stress. You just leave it alone because it's not your place as a lady to trace the man. Of course, you can position yourself because Ruth positioned herself. Ruth went to the fields, but um, it's not really your it's not your place to go and be pursuing the man and pursuing the man and um and trying to see if the man likes you or stressing over that. Mm -mm. But it's your place to rest in God, you know? And believe that the Lord will bring position yourself, right? Rest in God and believe that the Lord will do what he is best, what he will do. You know, I used to think what will be, will be. Why do I used to think that? Because first of all, um, up, up, up until now, many times um, the things that I've needed, God has just brought them to me. So for example, I had like a five-year plan in uni. I wanted to... I wanted to... um go to school in three and a half years. I went to school in three and a half years. I wanted to work with the UN. I did an internship with the UN. <laughs> and I wanted to get married after then, but that didn't happen. But my point is that generally, m many things that I've wanted, God has brought them to me. And so I had this imagination that what would be, would be. Um, also, raising up, being raised in my father's house, um, I kind of was raised in a privileged position. So... I didn't really lack anything, right? So I, I had the idea that what will be, will be, I will not stress myself. But hey, <laughs> Jesus has had to teach me that what will be, will not be, unless you go down and pray, you know? It's God that gives us things, but if we don't pray, how will God, when we pray, God, we give God the permission to do what he will do in our lives. But if, let me tell you something, God has a plan for your life. The devil also has a plan for your life. Yeah. It's high time that we talk about these things. Yeah. If you just say, oh, God will be, you will be lazy. You will not fight for what is yours in the place of prayer. We get what is ours in the place of prayer. Let's look at the scriptures. It's not like, oh, fever is just talking. Exodus chapter 34, verse 6 to 7 tells us the character of God. We know that God is good. It says, and the Lord passed before him. This was Moses. Moses had asked the Lord to show him his glory, right? And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the guilty, the innocent of the fathers, sorry, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children, to the fourth and fourth, to the third and fourth generation. Um, so, God is good. God is gracious. God is merciful. Um, God is long suffering, long suffering. I'm looking for the New King James version here. It means God is, is impatient, right? And He's overflowing in goodness and mercy, abounding. What does it mean to abound? He has a lot of goodness and mercy. If you're from Nigeria, you say He has goodness and mercy, Boku, right? He has a lot, a lot of goodness and mercy, right? So God is good, and God wants us to have good things. God wants us to. God is not wicked, right? Um, of course, it, you will grow at some point and then you won't really want your own things anymore. You want the things of God. But the point is that God is good and he wants us to have good things. Now, the challenge is to know whether that's a good thing you want is his will. <laughs> I've talked about it on this platform that 
sometimes my one thing is that i'm not the will of god but if you get close to the lord and you keep pursuing him eventually you will want what he wants and your heart desire will become his heart desire will become your heart desire so um first of all it's important to check that that thing that you are wanting right that you are thinking oh what will be will be is it from god that relationship is it from god right is that what god wants for you because if that's not what god wants for you you might not get it also if that's what if that was if that is what god wants for you and and the enemy sees that okay god has a stake here and this is very important then you might try to stop it so what are you going to do you can go to the place of prayer also the scriptures in ecclesiastes tells us um it says ecclesiastes 9 11 says i returned and i saw the swift and i saw i i returned and i saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift nor the battles of the strong neither bread to the wise nor yet riches to men of understanding not nor yet favor to men of skill but time and chance happeneth to them all i read from the new king james version from the king james version sorry i want to read from I want to see from other versions, other translations. Um, okay, let's see from the Berean Study Bible because this kind of um, helps us in our context. I saw something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither is the bread to the wise, nor the wealth to the intelligent, nor the favor to the skillful. For time and chance happen to them all. Hallelujah. So, um, this is Solomon's, right? One of Solomon's writings. It was at the end of his life. He was considered to be the wisest man before Jesus, right? And, and, and he, he had a lot of, um, natural wisdom and he had gone through a lot of things. He followed God at the beginning of his life. At the end of his life, he turned, in the middle of his life, he turned, but hopefully at the end, he came back to the Lord. But um, he was very wise. And one of the things he's saying here is that, see, eh, good things don't happen to to people because oh they are wise they are they are wise or they are intelligent or because they have a lot of skills right it's because time and chance happen to them they prepared and preparation when preparation meets opportunity then you have what you what you desire right you get the desired outcome so they prepared and yes it's good to prepare um physically because now many of us are trying to get skills you know we're trying to read books so that we are updated right especially in the office for example there's a lot of office politics i hate those things <laughs> but um i know that everywhere there's office politics and as a child of god you can get tempted to start doing all the bickering by biting slandering so that you can climb up the ladder but that is not the way of the Lord. That is not God's way, right? We go in the place of prayer. See, yeah, this life is spiritual. So whatever you need, tackle it in the place of prayer. Tackle it in the place of prayer. So that when you come out, right, your outcome will show. So he says it's not for the skillful, it's not for the wise, not for the intelligence. And that's the thing. Many of God's children, we only focus on the physical and forget the spiritual. Time and chance happen to them all. So prepare physically prepare spiritually right so that when the opportunity comes and your preparation meets your opportunity you get your outcome so it's not about oh i'm so intelligent i'm so smart no tackle it in the place of prayer everybody has an altar really this life is very spiritual very 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 spiritual but don't let anybody deceive you even in the western world this life is spiritual right we as children of god where we can determine our destinies by the things we speak so it's so important that we are also careful of what we say with our mouth because the power God has given us power in our mouth, right? Even the world was created by the power of God in his mouth. Light be. That was what he said. And then light appeared. So it's really important that we guard the things that we say. So we prepare. We prepare. We prepare for what we want. We don't say, oh, what will be, will be. What will be, will not be. So you kneel down in the place of prayer, study God's word, get God's word in your heart, speak the word of God, take holy communion, mm, take holy communion, you know, that's how we fight in the place of prayer. I want to read one more scripture before I close, um, just to explain, just to further highlight the place of spiritual preparation. So um, Isaiah 38, on the New King Version, he says, um, so this is basically, I'll just give you a quick synopsis. So um hezekiah who was one of the one of israel's kings was sick and god sent a prophet to him um that he was he was re- that set your house in order you're going to die you know and hezekiah prayed so let's just read it quickly um uh and then god heard him 
So, um, in those days, Hezekiah was sick near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said, Thus saith the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall and prayed to the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, how I have walked before you in truth with a loyal heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And the word of the Lord came to Hezekiah, saying, Go and tell his the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Go and tell Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, your father, I've heard your prayer, I've seen your tears. Surely I will add to your days fifteen years. I will deliver you and the city from the hand of King Assyria, and I will defend the city. And this is a sign to you from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing which he has spoken. Behold, I will bring the shadow on the sundial which has gone down with the sun, on the sundial of Ears, ten degrees backwards, so that the sun returned ten degrees on the dial by which it had gone down. Hallelujah. So here, God um, answered Ezekiah because Ezekiah prayed, right? Ezekiah could have said, ah, what will be, will be. Well, this um, um, prophet Isaiah is just saying his own thing. Oh. What will be, will be, right? He, he, or he could have just even gone with the punishment or with the thing that the Lord has spoken to him. But instead, he, he prayed. So the place of prayer cannot be overemphasized. We must pray for our futures. So as we enter 2022, please, I beg you in the name of the Lord, don't go with the idea that what will be, will be. No, go with the idea that you have to fight and pray for your destiny right you have to um and where do you fight in the place of prayer you fight with your mouth hallelujah we fight with the things that we say we don't just say oh okay what will be what will be will not be you yeah so um my encouragement to you today is to take your prayer life seriously take your bible reading seriously take meditation seriously um and i understand that yes some of us might have small children because i mean that's season of having a small child and it's not so easy especially meditation to meditate because when you're meditating that's when the child wants to cry or talk but at least you can write out scriptures and be walking around and be reading it right i have scriptures on my phone and when i feel um, i'm being attacked i get my phone look at my scriptures so take the place of putting god's word in your heart seriously because these are our weapons hallelujah i hope this um recording has blessed you if it has encourage you to like to share and to subscribe and thank you so much for joining I will see you again or you'll hear from me again next week. Bye-bye.